I'm here because I am a roaring lion crying out righteousness. How long does it take to undo 400 years of social and spiritual slave birth? How long does it take? Remember the last time we taught, we told you that the Jews did not make it to the promised land who made it out of Egypt on the night of the Passover, did not make it into the promised land because they was just too institutionalized to slavery. They were just too institutionalized to their disdain for Egypt, for the Egyptians. They were too institutionalized to be able to understand that God could take them from the tents they were living in in Goshen as slaves working in the fields and take them to a promised land to live in houses that they didn't have to build, to drink from uh, wells that they did not dig, and to eat from fruit and vine trees that they did not plant. They were just too institutionalized. When you got 400 years of one way of thinking, you're a slave, and so therefore all your responses to humanity, no matter what other people who may not be slaves are, your responses are to humanity is that I'm a slave, and there are techniques. Either the man, or he's against us, or this, or that, we're being treated unfairly. None of them questioned the fact that God told Abraham that they would be slaves. It was never promoted. It was never promoted by Dathan or Korah, or even by Moses in a large sense, to say to them, you're a slave because God said to Abraham that you're going to be slaves. Nobody promoted that. They just saw themselves as slaves. They pretty much exercised themselves from the biblical prophecy and developed a lifestyle that would help them cope with being a slave. And that's all they knew. The only, only food that they knew was the food that slaves ate and how it was prepared. They never lived in a house above two stories if they lived in a concrete dwelling. Most of the dwellings they lived in obviously were tents as they lived and moved from place to place. So how do you how does Moses, rather, not you, how does Moses take a people whose father, whose grandfather, whose great-grandfather, whose forefathers, whose ancestors all had one mindset, we're slaves, and they've adapted their lives to being slaves. They see the rest of the world either in a negative way or the rest of the world in an oppressive way, they are slaves. They've always been slaves. They've never known anything but being a slave. Everybody they've ever known was slaves. They were born slaves. That's all they know. And even though there's another world out there, they're not able to understand it nor appreciate it because it's not in their DNA. They were born slaves. The pain of their forefathers was in the birth when they were born as young boys and young girls. So how does Moses how does Moses eradicate, how does Moses erase that 400 years of slavery and tell them you're gonna be a leading nation? You're gonna be the number one nation of people in the world. You're gonna live in houses that you didn't build. You're gonna have authority, autonomy. You're gonna have this great life. You're gonna be blessed. I'm gonna bless you going in, bless you going out. How do you Take a message like that to a bunch of people who the only thing they understand, the only thing they respond to is slave mentality or slave talk. How do you get them from Egypt to the promised land? They didn't make it. They, they didn't make it. Because it's, not, it's almost impossible. And I'm not saying that God should know or that Moses should know, but they didn't make it. And they didn't make it, not because they didn't have the power. They saw Moses turn the, the Nile River to blood. They saw him three days of darkness. The locusts came. They saw Moses lift up his staff and Pharaoh's army was drowned in the Red Sea and they were able to kick up dust in the middle of the Red Sea. Dust, I tell you. Dust at the bottom of the sea. They saw it happen. But yet with all of that, what Moses was able to do, he could not take that slave mentality out of them. Their minds were in prison, in slavery. And even when they got across on the other side, they said after a year or so, we want to go back. Moses said, go into the land, check it out. We'll do our battle plan. We'll decide how we're going to protest, how we're going to fight. They went in and said, we can't do it. We can't do it, they said. And so they died. They didn't go in. <laughs> they didn't go in. I mean, you have to look at that as some great phenomena. Here are people that God promised them a land, yet 
the mentality of slavery was stronger than the teachings of Moses and Mount Sinai. And boom, shakalaka goes right there. It's almost incredible that 400 years of being a slave, that mama was a slave, that daddy was a slave, the uncle, the aunts, and everybody in their family were slaves. So all they can think about is that mentality that has been developed to cope with being a slave. And even the teachings of Moses, the laws of Mount Sinai, could not convert them to give up that slave mentality and walk into that promised land and occupy it the way God said. They died. They died. All of them died, except Joshua and those under the age of 20. So how does that, how does that correspond with some of the things that are going on now with us? Hamites, if you will. You know, the... Um, it, it, if you look at some of the things that I pointed out, and it might seem cruel, and many would consider it cruel because they're ashamed of it. They're not, it's not cruel because it's, it's a truth or that's a, it's a lie. But they would consider it cruel because they're ashamed of it. But it's true. Before coming to America, you Hamites, or we Hamites, before coming here, we were in Africa and we built nothing. They live in a house above two story, mostly tents. And our recreation was with animals. <laughs> Athletics. It's what we did. We didn't wear a lot of shoes or fancy clothing. It wasn't something that we did. It wasn't in our DNA. 